back at it again and um apparently this is going to be a video here that we're going to be checking out about the border situation i know most of you have heard about it but for the couple of you that haven't i just want to do a brief uh summary of it all so obviously our borders are wide open and a lot of these democrat-led states and cities are considering themselves sanctuary places um which I don't think they really want that status, but they know that they have to, you know, to symbolize, hey, you know, we're welcoming everyone. Well, guys like, uh, I believe his name is Greg Abbott. I think that's his name, Abbott. I know his last name is Abbott. And also uh, Ron DeSantis are sending migrants that are coming through the southern border to some of these states and some of these cities. <clears throat> and Democrats are freaking out about it. And it's just hilarious because, you know, my thing is, it's, 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 it's okay when somebody else has to deal with the problem, but when you actually have to deal with it, oh my God, how, how dare Ron DeSantis send these folks to our city that this is terrible. This is, yeah, mm -hmm. they're, they're completely freaking out about it. Uh, I want to say even, um, uh, what, what's, what's the lady up in Chicago, uh, man, uh, uh, why, why am I drawing a blank? But the black lady that runs, that runs Chicago, the mayor of Chicago, uh, she, she has even, last time I checked, has sent migrants from Chicago to another city when she was complaining about migrants being sent to Chicago. So it's just like, hold on, wait a second, wait a second. You're supposed to be welcoming of all these folks and you're sending them off to somebody else? Okay. Anyway, Light, Lightfoot, Lightfoot is her last name. I, I can't think of her first name. I don't know why I always draw a blank in the middle of videos when I'm trying to make these. But anyway, so that's what we're going to be diving deeper into today in this video here. So uh, I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys so, so much for all of the continued love and support. And with that being said, Let's dive in. All right, but first, right. more busloads of migrants arriving in sanctuary cities, and it's causing quite the meltdown among Democrats. Today, illegal <clears throat> immigrants were dropped off outside of Vice President Kamala Harris's home in Washington, D.C. In an interview with Vice News, Harris slammed Texas Governor Abbott and Florida Governor DeSantis, saying, quote, I think it is the height of irresponsibility, much less just, frankly, a dereliction of duty. This is the height of irresponsibility. <laughs> no, it's irresponsible for you and everybody on the left that that push this crap to be telling folks in other countries, hey, just come on in. Just come on in. You don't have to you don't have to go about the proper process of coming into this country. You don't have to do that. Just walk on in. It's totally fine. See, and this is the problem that I have. Like, if you're going to have an open border, have an open border. But don't complain about it when you have to deal with it. Like, Kamala and all of these other Democrats, and this, this is this is why I, I, I like to call out the hypocrisy, you know, because it just doesn't make any type of sense. Like, if, if Republicans were doing this crap, I would call them out as well. I, I would like to consider myself fair in, 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 in that way. If Republicans were saying, hey, we got open borders, but the Democrats were sending them to, you know, Republican led cities and states and the Republicans started complaining about it. Listen, I would rag on the Republicans, too. So just the same. Don't be a hypocrite. Stand on your word. Stand on your word. You want to open borders when Republicans had to deal with it, when Abbott and DeSantis and all these other Republicans have to deal with this issue. It's totally fine. It's all hush hush and nobody says anything. But as soon as you actually have to do something about it, oh, my goodness, these guys are horrible people. It's just like the hypocrisy. And it's, it, 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 it's absolutely disgusting. But that's just my humble opinion. What, what, what do y'all think about it? <clears throat> Meantime, migrants are pouring over the southern border. Look at this. Our Fox News drone team capturing hundreds of them crossing illegally. That is incredible video there. Wow. The number of migrants sent to Martha's Vineyard, just 0. .0025 of the total encounters at the border so far this fiscal year. And Martha's <clears throat> Vineyard quickly shipped them out to Cape Cod. Instead of scrambling and worrying about a bunch of rich people and having 50, and oh, by the way, they already bust them out. They're gone. They said, they said we want everyone, no one's illegal, and they're gone within 48 hours. 
Okay, uh, let's take it out to the panel. Um, let's lay out the facts here first, right? 50 immigrants, illegal immigrants, uh, purportedly asylum seekers arrived in Martha's Vineyard. They were quickly uh, taken away to an Air Force base, a military base in Cape Cod because I guess the island couldn't support the immigrants. They didn't have enough housing, but let's be honest. This is an island with a plethora of hotels, motels, Airbnbs, plenty of rooms. Typically during the year, 17,000 people live on the island. In the summer, that number swells to 200,000. So I think there were a couple of places maybe they could have stayed. I wow. We don't have the space. There's no place for these guys and gals to live. You go from 17,000 people to over 200,000. And you mean to tell me, I think, I think he, Ron DeSantis said there was only 50. You mean to tell me you can't house 50 people? 50. You're, you guys remember when the World Economic Forum uh, put out the video and we've discussed it on this channel briefly here and there, but they said you will own nothing and you will be happy. Remember they said that? So um, how about some of these rich Democrats give up their property, you know, they don't own it anymore, and give it to some of these folks? They should be happy, right? That's what they want. <laughs> you know what I mean? But see, and this is why I can't buy into all of that crap because they, they, they preach all of that stuff to us. But then when it's their turn, when it's their time to live up to their words, it's like, oh, 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 no, 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 no. That's not what we want. And we've seen that kind of thing happen over and over again. I can think of an example right off the top of my head where we had a video with um, uh, Dinesh. Uh, and he was talking to a college student about, um, you know, black people getting an opportunity in college. And Dinesh was like, OK, well, leave this leave this institution and give a black person your spot. The guy wouldn't leave. Oh, well, you know, so like it's all fine and dandy when somebody else has to deal with the problem, when somebody else has to sacrifice. But when these guys and gals on the left and a lot of Democrats, I won't say all, I shouldn't say all, <clears throat> but a lot of them, when they have to deal with the issue, then it's a problem, you know? So uh, the, the hypocrisy is just absolutely ridiculous. But anyway, let's continue on. I would like to put up right now a list of states that call themselves sanctuary states. Let's take a look at them. Cal there you see California, Colorado, Connecticut, Illinois, and Massachusetts. I know Illinois is Democrat. Obviously, New York is Democrat. Cali is Democrat. Is Oregon Democrat? Forgive me. You know, I'm, I'm still I'm still in the learning process. I don't know, you know, obviously everything there is to know about a lot of this stuff. I know some of you guys are probably looking at me like this, this flipping idiot. You know, I know it's the bigger ones. New York, Illinois, California are, you know, Democrat. I would assume Washington is. No, wait, Oregon has to be right. Has to be. But is what? I'm just going to assume all three of those are. <laughs> You guys can let me know in the comment section, but are there any Republican led states that are considered uh, that are on this board here? Let me know in the comment section, please. I'm interested to know. So Massachusetts does consider itself a sanctuary state. Martha's Vineyard is in Massachusetts, right? So Jason, I want to ask you, <clears throat> and I know this question sounds a little sarcastic, but should they have taken these migrants in should they have put them up somewhere rather than send them off in just a day or two well they should have taken in but that should never happen in the first place look the biden harris administration made a conscious effort to bring people in they attracted him with this magnet that says come here we'll release you into the united states of america and big states like texas and arizona and don't get me wrong like i don't i guess i should say this i don't i don't want to seem like a heartless individual you know i do have a heart right i feel for some of these folks I feel for all of these folks, really, um, you know, because typically they're leaving situations that are a whole, whole lot worse than the U.S. You know what I mean? Um, I was watching a video. I don't know if I checked it out with you guys or I watched it on my own. But some of these guys and girls are coming from Venezuela. And we've watched videos on what's going on in Venezuela. Right. So I feel for them. And I know if I was in that same position, because like I always tell you guys, I like to put myself in other people's shoes. 
and try to see things from other people's perspective. And if I was in their shoes and I was living in a place like Venezuela, like if the U.S. turned into what Venezuela turned into, I would want to run to a place just like the U.S. I know that I would be trying to leave as fast as I possibly could. Right. So I, I, I do feel for them, you know, but and there's always a but with the situation. Things have to be done the right way. Right. So I, I, I just don't want to make it sound like I don't have a heart or I don't care for these individuals at all, because that's not the truth. You know, I definitely do. California, New Mexico, but dealing this by the millions. So a few dozen show up in Martha's <laughs> Vineyard and oh, my goodness, there's not enough Airbnbs to, to handle all this. Uh, look, what Governor DeSantis is doing, what Governor Abbott's doing, what, what Governor Ducey is doing is right to share a few out there. I, I used to be on the immigration subcommittee when I was in mm -hmm. Congress. Yeah. You know what? Democrats are now, the White House is actually trying to blame Republican obstructionism. And I, I just laugh at that. Where is the Democratic bill if they're so adamant about it? And the Democrats have the House, the Senate, and the presidency. If they think the Republicans are causing this problem, it's only Biden and Harris that are causing this problem. Well, uh, I guess uh, at the end of the day, it is up to Congress to do something about it, right? I mean, Congress well, the president can lock down the border. <coughs> the laws are on the books. There's nothing on there that says you have to let all these people in. Legally and lawfully, we bring in about a million people a year. It's wow. only under Biden and Harris that they changed something like 90 different rules. And they're doing catch and release. The White House won't even speak with the Border Patrol at this point. Ask a Border Patrol agent what we should do. That's, those are the people that are on the front line that yeah. we should be asking this question. To. Yeah, they are, and a lot of low morale there, a lot of overtime, a lot of overworked yeah. people for sure. Uh, Dr. Sapphire, so... What's the point of even having Border Patrol at this point? We're just letting everybody in, so just send Border Patrol home. Right? What's the point? Uh, in this case, we're talking about 50 people. But when you look at the border, you, you, when you look at <clears> towns <throat> like El Paso, Uvalde, Eagle Pass, Del Rio, thousands of people are pouring in over there. Talk to us about the impact health-wise on these cities. These people have to be screened. They've just made a long trek across the border. They're dehydrated. They need medical care. How does this impact the, the health infrastructure of a city? Well, Anita, first of all, I think Governor DeSantis was just trying to make a point at the resources required mm -hmm. to care for these migrants that are coming across the border in droves. And re let's remember, 50 were sent to Martha's Vineyard. About three to 300 to 500 every day come into the small town of Eagle Pass, Texas. This is a small town. The average income of a household, household there is about $40,000. You think they have the infrastructure for these amount of people? Of course not. And Ron DeSantis made his point. All of a sudden, and you already quoted the numbers. I had it written down. Yeah. here. Martha's Vineyard, yeah. 17,000 residents live there all the time. In the summer, mm -hmm. somehow they're able to take care of 200,000 people. There are a lot of empty homes. If anybody can handle having... And you know, one thing that I do wonder is, um, I wonder if a lot of these individuals coming from, you know, through or through our southern border are family members of, you know, Latinos that are already here. <clears throat> because... The statistics show that Latinos or Latinas, the Latino community, is leaving the Democratic Party in droves. So I wonder if this will completely backfire on the Democrats, this whole situation. Because obviously, and I've speculated, and I don't know with 100% certainty, um, the Democrats see that black people are leaving the Democratic Party in droves, and now Latinos or Latinas <clears throat> are leaving as well. So I felt like they opened the border to try to, you know, mitigate that. Hey, we're losing all of these folks. So we're going to bust a bunch of, you know, bust a, bust a bunch more people in to cover the difference. But if these guys and gals are, you know, for the most part, family members of some individuals that already live here, I wonder if that would actually backfire. And if it did, what they would do about it. Do you think Democrats would go as far as sending them back out of the country? If, if they found out that it actually backfired, do you think they would be like, OK, well, no, we need to fix this problem. We need to get the illegal aliens, you know what I mean, out of the country. Or do you think they would just take it? Let me know in the comment section. But that was just a thought that crossed my mind there uh, just watching this.
a few more people, I would think that it would be Martha's Vineyard. But you are right. You have health screenings. You have people who are requiring medical care. You need to get these children <coughs> in school. You need to get them in a safe environment. And this takes a lot of resources. And it's not going to work just by shipping them out other places. It's also not going to work just keeping what's happening right now, the status quo. We have to stop them from coming into the country, and it needs to be happening in, in an orderly process. Because that, unfortunately, you're going to have these people suffering if they're just coming in because we don't have the resources to take care of them. But I just want to make one quick mm -hmm. point because we had Kamala Harris the full screen earlier where yeah. you said how she was essentially condemning what was going on but let's think of this for one second CNN recently said DeSantis approval rating was over about over 50 percent Texas politics newest um, newest poll came out showing Abbott has about a 46 percent approval rating and yet the New York Times says Harris the border czar has about 39% approval rating. So something tells me Americans see that immigration is an issue, and obviously the Biden administration is not handling it correctly. Yeah, Americans wow. definitely think this is an issue. And to your point before, um, there are a lot of people who have been very critical about Governor DeSantis for pulling this, what they call a stunt, right? But I'd like to hear from some of the migrants, at least one man who said uh, this was one of the best things that ever happened to him. Let's take a listen. They're not really, instead of hurting us, they did us a favor. All right, so he didn't seem too upset there about uh, being shipped to Martha's Vineyard. Uh, I also want to take a look at, uh, take a listen to how most of the mainstream media has viewed this whole event. Let's listen to this. Look, here is short Ron DeSantis and, frankly, Greg Abbott and Doug Ducey. We hate immigrants. Get the F out, and we will help you get the F out. This tactic by supposedly Christian right politicians like DeSantis, Arizona's Doug Ducey and Greg Abbott of Texas, is about as unchristian as it gets. This is so cruel and, and so unnecessary, so uncalled for, and so brazen. Uh, it shocks the conscience of any fair-minded human being. Some politicians would rather not only have an issue, but exacerbate it to the extent of literally human trafficking, as you said. She actually said that. She really said that. See, these, these folks on the left come up with the most extreme way to say something in order to rile people up. Oh, this human trafficking. <laughs> All right, uh, so Tyrus, uh, I'd like to get your thoughts on, on that well, particular you know, media montage right there. It is off season in Martha's Vineyard. <laughs> it is kind of a tough time to go. And I'm sure that the beaches weren't clean and whatnot. They didn't have the rakes out. Uh, but <laughs> the Republicans didn't start this little shipping party. That was not the, DeSantis was not the first one. Abbott was not the first one. Uh, who was that guy? Well, I'll do it like this. Who was that guy? Who was, the, oh yeah, it was the Biden administration who were flying people out on red eyes, which I can never get to go home, to all over the country, but they were sent to North Carolina and Florida, and they were flying them out at night. So I guess if you do it at night, it's better. But again, this is, this is first world problems individuals who all of a sudden get affected and the first thing they want to do is say oh it's not fair to bring them here don't bring them here where should we bring them you talk about human trafficking it's not in martha's vineyard it's at the border so the ones who are not sneaking across and getting these trips these to these different parts of the united states are going through the cartel are being strapped with fentanyl or worse if they're young 30 percent 30 percent of young women who are trying to cross are if they're not gang if they're not sold into the sex, like that's real problems. Not, I stepped outside my house to have my cup of uh, fresh coffee and I saw 50 people with smiles on their face taking selfies with their new cell phones that were given by the United States. That's not a kidnap victim. I've never seen a kidnap victim be like this, ever, <laughs> ever. And yeah, the, the, the human trafficking, it starts Facts. when they contract, if you will, with these drug cartels. They are paying them thousands of dollars to these coyotes to, to, to come up north and, and bring them across the border. And, and they, they want to get caught because they know they're going to get released. Right. And it's been this magnet from Biden and Harris.
You know what? If Joe Biden cared about this so much, then go to the border. Me with the Border Patrol. He's never done that in his 50 yeah, years. Well, no, you, know, you know, the coyotes then get arrested for the drug trafficking and the trafficking of humans. But what happens? They get deported. They get sent across the border. And then they just walk right on back yep. in because we have no way of stopping them from coming back in. It is a big problem, guys. <clears throat> we could spend the whole show talking about it, but we have to move on. Hey, Sean. So, hey, yeah. I mean, total and utter hypocrites when it comes to this entire border crisis and situation. Oh, yeah, we're welcoming of everyone except when they're on your front doorstep. When everybody else in this country has to deal with it, it's totally fine. But when when Kamala, oh, goodness, don't don't bring them to her her town or her city, you know, and, and, and we've seen this happen with many, many different people on the left, many, many different people, even our friends to the north. We checked out a video of that entire situation where uh, Trudeau was talking about how nobody was allowed to have weapons or fight or, you know, uh, harm anyone with a weapon. And the whole time he was saying this, he had armed security standing around him with high powered weapons. Absolutely crazy. I mean, you, you had, we had a, a video with Gavin Newsom talking about everyone should turn, turn, uh, turn down their AC, you know, so it, so it heats up in their homes while he has a full fleece on telling folks this inside of a building. Like, so you're telling everybody else to turn their AC off basically while you have, you clearly have yours on. Hmm. Double standard, you know, uh, it, it's just absolutely crazy. Crazy. And, and once again, you see that across the board. And I, I've got more examples as well that I can, uh, speak to, but, um, yeah, man, this this stuff is just just crazy. Uh, I I don't understand it. I don't get it. I don't understand how some people and once again, some people buy this stuff. They're eating this stuff up because if they weren't MSNBC, wouldn't be. We you saw the you guys saw the clips of people on MSNBC. Oh, these guys are terrible. Blah blah blah. People are buying it. <laughs> I'm like, you don't see the hypocrisy going on here. But hey, anyway. Y'all let me know what you thought about this crazy one in the comment section below. Like, share, comment, and of course, hit that subscribe button before you go. Peace and love, family. I'm out.